So hello folks, welcome back to the channel and to the Sheafton Rework series. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get on with some weathering. So I'm going to roll the credits and then we're going to come back and uh, start to get this thing weathered. So see you in a minute. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, and this is part three, I believe, of the Sheafton Rework series. Um, so it's going really well. Um, as I said, I've never tried anything like this before, so I'm quite happy in the direction that it's going. So in the last video, we looked at painting it. Um, in this video, we're gonna look at starting to apply some weathering to it. Um, these things, they are weathered, they are a bit chipped and they're a bit, dirty and stuff but they're not like heavy mud dirty um, so we're going for more subtle dust of type effects with the weathering um, so what we're going to do is head down to the bench um, and get going so we're going to be using some pigments some oils um, some sponge chipping etc uh, so yeah stick with us this be a bit of a long one but uh, I'll get going down at the bench see you in a minute so folks here we are we are all flat coated so i flat coated it in well no i'll start again so the first thing i did was a very simple pin wash now i haven't shown me doing that um because it's a pin wash um so over the clear coat over the the gloss clear coat we just used uh tamir accent color dark brown and just went around the whole tank um and wherever there was recesses or panel lines or whatever, we just added that, left it an hour or so, and then went in with some odorless spirits and just removed the excess. Is essentially what we've done there. And that's created this, this kind of shadow effect that you can see here. Then the whole thing was flat coated. Um, so I used my go-to, which is the Windsor & Newton Galleria, uh, mixed about 50-50. Um, or 60 40 probably with acrylic thinners um, and then just sprayed through the airbrush let that dry overnight and we end up with this nice dull flat coat um, so the next stage is to really knuckle down it and get some some weathering done um, so you'll see on this panel here um, I'm essentially doing a oil dot filter so the colors I've used um, I've used the oil brushes from MIG um, so we're going to use buff, turn that around, we're going to use dust, we're going to use yellow, we're going to use white. So they've been applied to this, this panel at the front. Um, so I'm going to show you me doing this panel essentially. Um, and then what I'll do off camera is I'll do the rest of the tank because otherwise it gets very, very boring <laughs> because it's the same principle over the whole thing on the green and the sun color. Uh, we're going to be using the same, the same oil colors. So the easiest way to do this, um, you can get any sort of container. I've got these little, little metal ones from. Uh, I think they're by MIG, actually. You get like 10 to 3 quid or whatever. Um, and then again, Windsor & Newton Sansador, which is essentially, as you can see there, it's odourless mineral spirits is all it is. Um, and we're just going to decant a little bit of that into the dish. And then what I'm going to use is just two sort of cheap flat brushes um, and a little bit of cardboard. So dead simple, nothing fancy really. 
So what you don't want is your brush to be saturated with this stuff. So a little bit on the brush and then take most of it off on the cardboard. So almost, almost as if you're going to be dry brushing is probably the the best way of judging it, I guess. Um, so yeah, you don't, you certainly don't want your brush to be wet. And then the other brush, you want to keep dry. So once you've got your brush sort of moistened, if you like, and then we're just going to start streaking that oil all in the same direction. And working in the same direction, then we're gonna oh, spill that. Don't mind. That's why I put the uh, the paper down. Check the cutting mat. And yeah, so you're almost left with with nothing really. But once this dries, now oil paint does take a while to dry. But once this this mineral spirits evaporates on the surface of the model then you will get this very nice subtle effect and it's as simple as that so then go in with your dry paintbrush so there's no th uh, spirits on this at all and just take off the excess now it looks like you haven't achieved anything at this stage but believe me once this dries you will see this subtle effect and it's as simple as that. Um, it really is. It's not rocket science at all. Um, so I'm going to go around the whole tank and I'm going to do this. Um, and then we'll come back once that's done, have a look at it. And then we'll move on to the next stage of weathering. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. So uh, I will see you once that's done. Okay, folks, so the chipping for now is done. Um, and as I said, the way I've done it, so you can see along here, along this, this edge here, around the, the turret ring here, and around the hatch, is just using Vallejo Model Colour German Grey, um, and essentially just having a little bit of sponge in some tweezers and dabbing away um, until you get the sort of desired effect it's very subjective um, what i have tried to do is focus on areas um where i know you know crew would be getting in and out um and the paint would wear essentially so that's and you know stowage bins open that sort of stuff so that's what i've tried to do um it's not perfect but it'll do for now um and we're ready to move on to the actual weather weathering effects um, so let's have a look at how we're going to do that. Okay, folks, so I'm just going to run through what I'm going to use for this kind of bit of the weathering process. Um, so we're going to be using pigments. So you can take them straight out of the pot. Um, but what I use, it, it's like a palette. So all it is, is an old piece of glass out of a photo frame. Um which I've just protected the edges and give it a bit more strength with some masking tape. Stops me cutting myself, basically. Um, I'm gonna be using run of the mill sort of cotton buds or Q-tips, depending where you are. A cheap old paintbrush. Um, to decant the pigments onto the palette, uh, I'll just use the Tamiya stirring stick um, with a little spoon on the end, which is ideal for this. Um, pigments I'm gonna be using, so I'm gonna be using MIG Europe Dust, MIG Dry Mud, and MIG Light Euro Earth. We're not going for a heavy, sort of muddy um, weathering on this because of the environment that they operate in. More of a sort of light mud, light dirt, dusty appearance. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And then what we shall do is bring in the actual model, which is mounted on a jig, which should give me enough 
kind of space. So if I put them all sort of there, very difficult to do this on camera. And I'm going to zoom in and just move my camera. And we're going to concentrate on that panel there, right in the center um, with the 21 on it. So what we want to do, or what I want to do rather, is go from dark to light with with the, the pigments. So the first one we're going to use is the Europe Dust. So if I move my palette over there. Super, right. So all I'm going to do is use the Tamiya Stirring Stick. Um, as you can see, it's in there. And it's just got this little spoon on it. I'm just going to take a little bit of that out and just put that on my palette. There we go. Then all I'm going to do is load my brush with the, the, the pigment and I'm just going to start dabbing it into place. Now, what I want is kind of the bottom of the panel darker with the top of the panel will sort of fade in sort of halfway up the panel um, to a lighter effect. Now the benefit of using pigments that I find is that we, we do create a slight texture which you won't get with a wash or anything like that. Um, so we do create this texture which to my eye gives it a little bit more um, realism, I guess. So you can buy um, all sorts of pigment fixers, uh, etc. I have them. Um, in fact, there's one down there, which is the Vallejo um, pigment binder. I generally don't use it. Um, so all I'm going to do is just a tiny touch of tap water. And then I'm going to use water just to start to bind these to the surface. And then hopefully what will happen is as that water starts to evaporate, it leaves us with the, uh, with the pigment. So just kind of working very gently. Looks awful at the minute. Around. And then with some of the water still on the brush, I'm gonna create like a, it's almost like a paste with the pigment around the bottom of the panel, which will give us this texture. So you can use thin PVA, you can use a pigment fixer, you can use acrylic thinner. There's many ways of doing it. This is just, for me, how I've kind of uh, found the best way for me. Um, but just because it's the best way for me, as with everything in this hobby, doesn't mean it's the best way for, for someone else. And there we go. So you can start to see now, as that water is evaporating, it's not as stark. Um, it's not as wet looking. And we don't really want it to be wet looking. We're not going for a wet mud effect. We're going for a dusty, slightly dirty, muddy effect, not wet mud. If I was doing wet mud, I would probably use other products, to be fair. Things like Citadel Technical Paints, etc. So there we go. So we start to build up that texture and that's what we're after. So then I'm gonna go on to the, uh, no I'm not. I'm gonna go on to the Dry Mud, which is a slightly lighter shade. Decant it onto the palette in exactly the same way. So rather than dipping in my brush into the pot and contaminating this color with the other color blah 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 
or introducing any moisture, decant it onto the palette and use it from the palette. So then I'm not going to start right at the bottom of this one. I'm going to start and leave, leave a little bit of that original colour. So as we can see, we start to build up this kind of dusty effect, which is what we're after. So on and so on. So it's not rocket science, but I think it makes such a difference to the overall finish. Um, and I, I like pigments. A lot of people don't. A lot of people can't get on with them. Um, bear in mind that if you're going to be handling this model afterwards, you will lose some of that pigment. Um, if you put a clear coat over the top, it will change the colour, the effect. So, you, you know, horses for courses. But this, this model is certainly not going to be sort of driven <laughs> driven around the floor and bang bang noises and all that sort of stuff so I don't worry too much about that um, and it will be on a base so if it is going to be moved it will be the base that's moved not the not the model itself if that makes sense so then we're going to use some light Euro earth and again just start dabbing it on and blending it with the other colours until we're kind of fairly happy that we've got it where we want it to be. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a cotton bud dry and just in little circles really start to work that in now and start to blend it into the paintwork. We want to try and avoid, so you can see here, towards where the top of the Q-tip is now, we've got this kind of line. So what we want to try and do is blend as best we can around that. Now, what's causing that line is the original decal underneath. Um, that, that's what's causing it. So we'll just try and blend as best we can. And then, when I say moisten the cotton bud, very minimal. Um, so it's almost dry. And then you'll see, now, you can see there where the cotton bud's moist, but this moisture will evaporate almost instantaneously, really. And it just assists with the blending of those pigments. And that's what we're after. So we're just working around. I try if I can, rather than working in sort of straight lines, vertical, horizontal with this, I try as best I can, as I say, to, to work in little little circles. I think it, in the end it gives a more natural um, effect rather than in straight lines. We're not trying to use this for streaking or anything like that. So we're trying to create just this natural dust effect on the panel. So we'll change that for a fresh Q-tip now, completely dry. And that's kind of the effect. The key with this is there's no rush. You know, the, these things aren't gonna go anywhere, if anything. 
the fact that they stay movable and stay around is um, almost a disadvantage, really. Um, but yeah, so you can take your time with it and build up the effects very, very slowly to, to how you want it to be. What you will notice underneath here on the tracks and on the bottom of the wheels, the, the excess pigment has kind of landed on those. That's not a problem at all. If anything, it's a bonus. We just take our brush and rub those in because when I come to do exactly the same sort of thing on the wheels and the tracks, it's kind of started it for us with the same same colours. So yeah, just rub them in, it's not a problem. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go all around the vehicle, around the sides, the wheels, the tracks, front and rear, um, and, and do this. Um, and then hopefully at the end of that, we'll come back and we'll see it um, as we want it to be. Or the, the, what I've got in my mind's eye and looking at reference pictures. So uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, folks, so we are done for now, I think is the, the best way of saying it. So that panel and the other side panels on the, uh, the side skirts are done. Um, so all I've done, like I showed you, is just build up the level of pigment slowly but surely. Um, and we've achieved kind of what I had in my mind's eye and looking at reference pictures and everything else. So yeah, that's it's kind of where I want it to be. Um, so I'm not sure what's next, maybe a little bit of streaking using some enamels, um, and then we'll go in maybe and do a few splashes, um, very sort of subtle, um, along the sides. Um, yeah. And then I think for weathering for this stage, we're, we're done. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go back face the camera, but, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with me this far. So there we go. Um, the weathering for now is done. I'm going to spend a few days just with it on the bench to the side, having a look at it out the corner of my eye and see if I need to do anything else. Um, I may apply a little bit of streaking maybe um, and maybe some sort of splash effects. Um, what I do need to check, which I didn't and I should have really, is the direction of the tracks and the track links. Because when I've looked back on the video while I've been editing, I don't know whether they're in the right direction. Um, so I'm going to double check that and if I need to change them, I could just take the tracks off um, and get them changed. No problem at all. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have a look at that, make sure I've got those the right way around. Um, and yeah, that's it. So don't forget to hit the like and subscribe, hit the little bell notification. Um, and then the next part will either be more weathering where we we're applying some splash mud and that sort of stuff. Or we're going to be moving on directly to the base. Um, and I, I'm going to have a think about what type of base I want it on. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Thanks very much for watching. Appreciate this has been a bit of a long one, uh, but there's no other way really for me to show what I'm doing other than, and be able to talk about it other than the longer video. Um, so yeah, but that said, I've waffled for long enough. Follow the links in the description below. Come and join our community Facebook group and uh, yeah, have a go at this. It's good fun. Till next time, guys, stay safe. Happy hobby. Bye-bye.